Pan-African resources, like all gold producers, is finding the going increasingly profitable as the price of the precious metal rises. Full year numbers show the headline earnings up from 17.9 million US dollars last year to 22.9 million this year, driven in part by a drop in the all-in sustaining costs, falling from 1,358 down to 988 million per ounce. Cobus Lutz is the chief executive of Pan-African resources. Welcome. Thank you um, very much. It's a big difference from when we were talking this time last year. Of course, the gold price has risen. Just what do you attribute to this gain in profit? I mean, whichever way you look at it, you've seen an increase in the performance over last year. Mm. As I said, you've got that drop in all sustaining costs, but also an improvement in the price of gold. Exactly. Well, the improvement in the price of gold isn't coming through in this set of results, so we would anticipate that only in the next set of results. But uh, I think very importantly, our Barberton operation delivered into circa 100,000 ounces for the year past. And also we managed to commission our Ilekulu tailings retreat and plant. So that's a, a very substantial project, $130 million of capital we put into the ground in 12 months and it's producing very successfully. It's actually one of the lowest cost producers in the world. Yeah, and you've gone, I think, from what was 172,000 ounces last year. I think your projections are closer to 185. Where is that coming yeah, from? Is right. that going to be from the tailings business or is that coming from underground? Well, actually, it's a combination. So it's, uh, this will be the first full year of production from Elakulu. So we're expecting a circa 65,000 ounces. And again, very low cost. We're producing at about $600 per ounce at Elakulu. And then um, we're also producing 20,000 ounces from what we call the H shaft pillar at, at, uh, at Evander and then 100,000 ounces from Barberton, which is a combination of underground and then also a surface business. Yeah, I said at the top that you've reduced your all-in sustaining costs. How are those costs spread over the underground to the surface, ta the tailings business? Sure, yes. Uh, the all-in sustaining costs came down very nicely, as you mentioned, about 20% actually from, from, uh, from the last year. Um, and that's a combination of us uh, producing from surface. So our surface business produces at about $600. And then our uh, underground business, principally at Barberton, produces about about eleven to twelve hundred dollars. So even uh, on the surface stuff, you still got a fair a fair margin to play with. I want to get onto the price of gold in just a minute because I think that's something else we ought to be, uh, be discussing. But I want to take it on to the effects of the depreciating South African rand because that's where your cost base are clearly. Um, um, what are the effects on on the business for that drop in the price of the local currency? Yes, yeah, so um, the uh, the impact of uh, de uh, depreciation in the rand is quite pronounced. So, so as a South African producer, we subject to South African inflation, which runs so clearly at more than the US dollar rate of inflation. But then, when our currency depreciates, like it has in the recent uh, recent past, we get a very nice uh, upswing in in profits. So, uh, in the year past, the gold price that we achieved was uh, five hundred and seventy seven thousand rand per kilo. That subsequent to year end has gone up to more than 700,000 rand per kilo. So that's a very substantial increase and most of that goes straight through to our bottom line in terms of earnings and cash flows. So that's a very positive development. And you've increased your dividend this time around. Does that mean therefore that if there's no further um, appreciation from the price differential between the South African Rand and the dollar, does that mean that the increase in dividends is a one-off or are you hoping to sustain that increase and continue that sort of um, return to investors? Well, uh, Pan-African has a long track record of sector leading dividends. Uh, we had to suspend the dividend about two years ago as a result of some issues. So we're very pleased to have reinitiated dividends now. It's at a modest level. It's about 1% yield at the moment, still better than earning a negative yield in some hard currencies. Uh, but we would anticipate uh, uh, that we, we should have the ability to increase dividends uh, in the years to come. Yeah. What about um, the costs in the business and how you see next year developing? We've already spoken about the improvement in your overall production expectations mm. for next year. Do you envisage taking on any more uh, liabilities to improve get an improvement or are you self-funding? Mm. Well we very much self-funding at this point. Um, as a matter of fact at the current gold price uh, we did gear our balance sheet almost in its entirety uh, in the next 18 months. That's obviously assuming we can deliver into production guidance. Um, so that's very favourable and very positive for us. And uh, well, there's no need for us to incur any more debt. Uh, all of the growth in our production guidance is uh, is organic. So it's from our own portfolio with fairly limited capital. Yeah. Let's bring in the, the, the share price. This goes back to pretty much the beginning, back end of 2016, beginning of 2017. 
Uh, you can see quite clearly in the middle of the chart here this uh, relatively large drop in the share price. But since the low point we saw back in June last year to the high here, I mean, that's a, that's a more than 100% increase in, in, the, in the share price. A little bit of money taken off the table recently. What do you tell um, investors or people wanting to come into the stock looking at this as an opportunity? Mm. What do you say about the outlook from where we are here? You've outlined your improvement expectations for next year in terms of production. But what about the overall business and, and what people are buying into? Sure. Well, I mean, the share price is a product of us delivering uh, versus anything else. And I think over the last 18 months, we really have delivered pretty much everything that we said we would do. We've curtailed our large scale uh, expensive ounces. We've brought Elikulu, which is ultra low cost ounces, into production. We had a very positive uh, impact uh, on safety. So we, we uh, sector leading in terms of South African uh, safety. Uh, we've reduced our oil and sustaining costs very dramatically. So, um, you know, we'll continue to deliver. Um, I think the prospects for the year ahead are very favorable, as you've pointed out. We've incre increasing production. Uh, certainly our oil and costs of production on a sustaining basis will remain constant, if not decrease. And that means nice margins. So we don't have to do anything extraordinary to, I think, have a good year. So what do you see as the opportunities there for in South Africa and indeed the challenges that a company mm. like uh, Pan-African faces? We have a uh, proven track record of operating successfully in South Africa and there's no reason for that to change. There are some challenges, but there are challenges in operating uh, gold mines anywhere in the world. Um, so we're positive and we have a good portfolio um, in terms of maintaining production, but even increasing production in future. So um, yes, I mean, we're based in South Africa and we're quite comfortable operating there. With that increase in production, of course, comes the potential to have to increase staff numbers. Do you find it difficult to find the right sort of staff, the right labour that gives you the opportunities you want to expand? Mm. So fortunately, uh, certainly a surface business uh, is, is not very labour intensive. We produce about 40% of all of our gold with only uh, 500 people. Um, so yes, I mean there is uh, there is potentially some shortage uh, a shortage of technical skills, uh, but we have a very good team of people and we supplement that team as and when required. Yeah. Okay. So what are we going to be talking about then when we meet this time next year? What do you see as the developments this year that's going to give you a, a steer or give investors a steer uh, to look more seriously at Pan African? Well, uh, hopefully you'll see more of the same in terms of delivery. So we'll hopefully would have delivered into our production guidance of 185,000 ounces. You'll see a full year of production from Elikulu, which should have a uh, very good if impact on our oil and sustaining costs, which have already come down quite dramatically. And then hopefully uh, uh, further returns to investors. Yeah, and outside of that, of course, is that all-important price of gold. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you working on in terms of the price where we're at, what, 15 50 at the moment or so? Sure, we're quite conservative, so we plan down from current levels. There's no need for us to sort of hope for a better gold price. It's not a great business model. So uh, we're conservative, we plan down 10 20 percent even, and even though that's a situation, we still uh, are very profitable and successful. Yeah, okay, look, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you again. Thanks indeed for dropping by, Cobus. It's, uh, it's good to talk to you again. That's Cobus Lutz. He's the Chief Executive of Pan-African Resources.